Greeting and salivations again. This is Tom Motoresto LLC, Bradenton, Florida. I'm going to do a short video on how I check float heights and also pressure tests. And I'll explain the pressure test later. Um, that's typically something that most people probably don't do. Uh, but like I said, I'll get into it then. Float height though is pretty critical. And so we're going to go over it on these uh, carburetors and bikinis uh, from the Banda 1200. You may have seen the other video that I have up on that. Anyway, this is what we're going to do. First of all, you look up your service data. In this case, the float height is 13 millimeter. Now, I like to convert stuff over to Imperial because uh, that's all the measuring tools I have. And not that I don't understand metric or metric. For my simple mind, it's easier because that's how I was trained back in the last century with machinist training. So. What I'm going to use to measure the heights is my Sterrett number 120 uh, dial caliper. And the float height on this, did I say it already, is 13 millimeters, which converts over to 511,000. So I'm going to set it up at 511, and then I'm going to lock it. And so now we're ready to go, and I always use this end of it. Well, not always, but I usually use the depth end of it. Now, most motorcycles, not all, most carburetors, I should say, on various motorcycles, whether it's a single, or an inline four, check the float heights the same way with the float tang just touching the float valve. Some are not that way. You have to look at your service data and and you know, be honest with you, sometimes it's not clear. I've run into a couple of different circumstances where the carburetors actually had to be upside down like this with the pressure or the weight of the floats on the float valves in order to do the correct float height. But in this case, since I know this bike pretty well, uh, I know it is when the floats are just touching. So what we're going to do is we are going to take and make sure that they just touch like bounce like that and there's really no weight on the float valve. So if you watch it as I roll it, see how proud of that uh, surface of the carburetor it is now, and you roll it and you see how far it goes down. So there's, you know, one reason why they do it this way in this particular bike. But again, look at your service data. Almost exclusively, you're going to be measuring from the car body up to the highest point in the, on the float itself. So we'll start with, uh, what is this one? This is, you flip it around, this is number one. Start with that. You want to check both sides of the float and uh, get an idea where it's at. That's pretty good right there, but I'm going to double check that I'm not putting any weight down. That's another way to do it, to check to see if you don't have the floats in the proper position, is let them hang the angle of the dangle, and then just rock it back until it just touches. And you'll be right almost every time, probably every time. There is a tolerance usually on the floats as far as the height goes. So, you know, be mindful of the tolerance. And, uh, you know, plus or minus a millimeter or something like that. As long as you're close, you're good. But I really try to be as, as exact as possible. All right, so number two here is definitely low. The float is low. Now, upside down, you'd think it's high, but actually it's low. The further down from the surface, that this float rests when it's closing the float valve, the less fuel that's going to get into the carburetor, at least the float ball part. And that is critical for operation on a lot of these carburetors because if it's set too low, that's the fuel level in the carburetor, it's not going to be, your jets are not going to be immersed enough to, especially the pilot jet, which is right there, see how teeny tiny below, almost to the level of the standoff for the main jet. Uh, that it, um, it it won't be right. So we need to adjust this one. So we need to make it go down more. We need to make this sit down, and you can kind of see it on this one. See how this one here is, let me turn you a little bit that way. This one here is definitely more flat or square with it, and this one is a little bit high on the bottom edge because it's low. The float is too far down in the float bowl. So, pretty easy to fix that. We take out a handy dandy OSHA approved tool, aka tiny screwdriver, and what we're going to do is we're going to hold the float and we need to bend the tang up because we need to give it more clearance to the 
to the float valve. You gotta be very careful with these, just a little bit at a time. And you try it again. I can tell right now I probably went too far, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Maybe. And that's okay. You just bend it the other way. But let's check to make sure. I'm just resting against it. Well, actually, no, it's still a little bit high. But it's not bad. So we're going to go a little bit more. On these tangs, just like any little piece of metal, you kind of have to go further uh, than you think you have to go to. And then it kind of springs back because it has a little bit of a memory to that uh, original location. You know, it's metal. So we're just going to get it to rest. And that's good. We're at 13 now. Now the fuel level in this particular float bowl will be higher and uh, be proper. So, all right, now keep in mind, I know I said you check both sides of the float, but these are plastic floats and they are what they are. So you're not going to be able to twist these around and get them even like you can with a metal float like on an old you know, antique motorcycle or other type of engine it, or carburetor that has those. So you're just going to have to live with it. Um, if it's too far off, if there's float damage, you simply need to replace the float. That's what we're going to do on all the rest of them. And then I'll come back and I'll show you the pressure test side. Sorry, I had to switch over to the iPhone directly because my, my lapel mic decided to take a dump. The battery did at least. So I got it on charge, but I need to finish this up, so can't wait. Anyway, this is my pressure test rig. It is a blood pressure cuff, believe it or not. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. And it has uh, teed off just a regular, I mean, it's not teed off. I mean, it's an inanimate object. I can't get pissed. So ha, this, uh, this is just a garden variety vacuum slash pressure gauge. We're gonna be looking at the pressure side over here. And the reason why I use a blood pressure cuff is because it acts as an accumulator. Because if I went directly to it, um, I wouldn't be able to really get an accurate hold because sometimes I want to leave it for a while. And this maintains, you know, it stretches out and it's, you know, it's got a rubber bladder in here. And so it stretches out and then maintains some pressure. The objective here uh, is to verify that the fuel rails, or I guess you can call it a fuel rail, the T inlet T and the connectors and the float valves are all sealing the way they're supposed to. And we're only using the weight of the floats pressing down on them uh, to, to facilitate that. It's pretty simple. And there's something I do a lot. I mean, on pretty much every rack that I either are, am checking for the first time, you know, right off the bike or doing some rebuild. And this one, I didn't have any new float needles, but they looked pretty good. But I did recondition the seats and put all new O-rings where, where the seats go into the uh, carburetor body itself. So all we do is we pump it up. We're gonna get some pressure up. Now there's often a little settling of the needle. It starts to go down a little bit uh, for, I don't know what reason, but it does. So I start at two and then I go to three. Sometimes it'll settle back and stop. Hopefully it stops. I think it's because the Velcro is stretching a little bit on the actual cuff. But right now you can see we're holding really good at three. Three PSI is pretty damn good considering this is not a fuel pump bike. So it's not bad. It's, it's leaking, leaching down a teeny bit here. Pump it back up and see what that is. It, again, it could be the cuff expanding. So you don't want to let that fool you. I hear the Velcro crunching a little bit. But you can see we're holding really well at three. And it's not, you know, bleeding down. I kind of can tell. Like, for example, we can make it do it by just lifting this up. And then your pressure goes down and we can try it again. Sometimes that can correct a slight leak, too. It might be a little dirt from assembly, just a little something in there, a little goo. Uh, and then you can just bleed it out that way, each one individually. So it's putting a positive pressure on the entire fuel system up to the floats. If you do have it bleed down, you want to check these connectors and the T and stuff. You just spray, gently spray a little bit of soapy water on everything. I don't do it on the floats itself. Sometimes I'll use uh, just some silicone spray on that, and if it bubbles out, then I know it's that. But uh, mainly I use this to check the fuel delivery um, system, you know, because 
if I need to unrack carbs, I mean, that's a big expense. I have to let the customer know it's going to be a crap load more than just a uh, carb cleaning and throwing a couple new O-rings at it. All right, so good. We are, we're holding a three. I'm fine with that. Now, how, how high will it go? Well, let's find out. There's four PSI. There's five PSI. There's six PSI. Seven. This one's holding really well. So this is going all the way up to eight. So this is this is a really patent fuel system. I don't want to go too high because I don't want to blow anything out. Let's go back down to five. Boom. All right. So that's pretty much what I do. I do it on all the racks like this, and you can even do it on individual single carbs, like in a ATV or something. And usually I'll do this on all four just to make sure I've blown out any dust. Okay, so I'll finish this up. We'll get the float bowls clean put back on. That's not part of this video. The, the video is setting the float heights and pressure testing the rack. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you on the next video.